Hey guys, uh, I was lucky enough to have Minis Forum send me this. This is the Minis Forum AI X1 Pro, uh, and man, this thing is an absolute beast. Now I have to say that if you're looking for something like gaming or for productivity, this is an exciting device to be sure. And stick around to the end because this thing actually whoops my PC in a surprising workflow. Like I literally did not expect this thing to be as good as it is. Uh, and it's even better than my PC. So um, yeah, stick around to the end because I'm gonna talk about that. Now the Minis Forum AI X1 Pro is a beautiful device with an aluminum chassis in the shape of a squircle. On the front, it has a power button. It has two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. It has a USB 4 port, a headphone jack, and a co-pilot button, which your mileage may vary on Linux. We'll talk about that in a second too. On either side of the front panel IO, there is a microphone array. On the right side of the device, there's an SD card slot, and when testing, it only seemed capable of class 10 read speeds. So this really isn't gonna be suited for someone like me who's copying large video files from SD cards all the time. And I'm talking like 40 to 50 gigabyte files from an SD card. Uh, it's just gonna take ages. The rear IO features a CMOS reset button, a Kensington lock, a USB 2.0 port, an Oculink port, a USB 4 port. We have uh, DisplayPort 2.1 and HDMI 2.1 as well. There are two LAN ports here rated for 2.5 gigabits each and an AC power connector. Finally, on the top, the device has a Windows Hello compatible fingerprint reader. Now, I have to admit, I love the design of this thing, especially because it has a built-in power supply. So there's no power brick that I have to worry about. At 195 by 195 by 42 and a half millimeters, it's able to fit neatly under the monitors on my desk. And this is an impressive feat since there's very little clearance under there. I also especially love how clearly each port is labeled. Uh, I just wish that the display port and HDMI also had which versions uh, they were compatible with printed on the chassis. Now, for performance, this thing boasts the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX 370. And uh, this is the latest and greatest from AMD, and it's a pretty impressive chip. At a max clock speed of 5.1 gigahertz and a default TDP of 28 watts, it's pretty efficient too. I'm quite pleased with the thermal performance here as well. And even when you have a game running at full tilt, it never gets hotter than like 80 something degrees at the uh, back of the chassis here. Now it has a Radeon 890M integrated GPU running at 2900 megahertz, and that's paired with 64 gigabytes of RAM running at 5600 megatransfers a second. And this can be kitted out with up to 96 gigabytes of RAM. Opening it up, we find that we have uh, three M.2 slots at the full 2280 form factor. It supports Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and the Bluetooth here seems pretty solid, which I can't say for some other mini PCs or even first party game consoles that I've tried recently. The AI X1 has a built-in speaker, which actually sounds pretty good. I'm impressed by how dynamic it sounds, with the caveat that this is still a built-in speaker and it sounds like a built-in speaker. They're not gonna be getting around that, but it does sound pretty good and it is serviceable. Uh, it sounds better than, a, than even the best smartphones I've heard recently, so that's pretty good. As far as the built-in microphone array, though, I can't say the same. It sounds like this. This is a test of the audio. Let's see how that sounds. And I really should not have to tell you that that sounds really bad. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the benchmarks. Typically, when I review a device like this, I like to run it through some of my favorite games that demand high performance from the hardware. The two biggest are Doom Eternal and uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Doom Eternal specifically had these strange moments of a single black frame before cutting to the next shot in the introductory cutscene. That's just something I've never seen before with a device like this.
Shadow of the Tomb Raider was mostly over 60 FPS during this benchmark, and for an integrated GPU, that is superb performance. But as is inevitable in the Linux world, give it a few months, and I think we can expect to see some incredible progress supporting this hardware. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a Oculink dock that I can try uh, one of my dedicated GPUs on this thing, but that's going to be something I definitely check out in the future. If you'd like to see that, make sure you get subscribed and hit that like button. Uh, it's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos like this. And while you're down there, why not leave a comment and let me know what you think about this review. Uh, other things that I can test with this because uh, one thing I'd really like to test and I didn't have a chance to is uh, running the AI features in DaVinci Resolve like subtitling stuff and, and things like that I think that that would be I think that this has a lot of potential to, to speed that up for sure uh, I also performed another benchmark here which was video rendering I installed DaVinci Resolve on this machine and tried to render my most recent video both in H.264 and H.265 codecs H.265 being the much more expensive operation between the two. Both of these operations took over 20 minutes, and for an 18-minute video, that's less than real-time rendering, which is kind of unacceptable in today's day and age. Compare that to the render times of my desktop at 4 minutes and 17 seconds for H.264, and 6 minutes and 7 seconds for H.265 rendering, and that's a pretty clear loss for the Minis Forum AI X1. I would have expected the Ryzen AI 9 HX would have better encoding hardware, but I, I guess not. But now we get to the part where this thing beats the absolute pants off of my desktop, and it's kind of shocking, honestly. AI performance. Now, I did a video, you can check it out up here, where I ran DeepSeek R1 7 billion on my Steam Deck. And I was expecting this thing to crush the Steam Deck, but also to come decidedly in second place compared to my desktop. But the fact is, this CPU has AI right in the title. And so I installed Alpaca and tried DeepSeek R1 7 billion, and it ran significantly faster than it did on the Steam Deck. So I tried asking my desktop the same question, and it was actually slower than the Minis Forum. So then I decided to try the 14 billion parameter DeepSeek model, and it also ran incredibly quickly, like blazingly fast, easily beating the pants off of the desktop too, which... My desktop, I have to remind you, is running an RTX 3080. That is incredibly impressive, especially considering uh, the power draw of this device is an order of magnitude lower than just the GPU in my desktop here. So just for good measure, I tried the 32 billion parameter deep seek model on this and my desktop, and goddamn, I mean, just look at this. This is crazy impressive. But before I end this video, I know that everybody is wondering, what about that Copilot button? What does it do on Linux? And can it be remapped to something useful? Well, it reports as meta plus touchpad off in KDE, which cool, I guess. I don't know. At least it's showing up as a keyboard input, right? And uh, yeah, I can remap this. I've actually got it set up uh, so that it launches Alpaca when I press it. Pretty neat. To close out this video, uh, I just want to say again, thank you to Minisform for sending me this to review. It's a really impressive device, and I'm looking at how I'm going to integrate this into uh, the rest of my workflow, because this hardware is excellent, and especially with the AI features, I have some things in my home that I want to automate with AI, and I think that this will have like have a, find a nice niche in my home lab, probably. With all that said, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you like that smash button and get subscribed. You can also become a member. Uh, Patreon and YouTube members get their name listed over here. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.